Hello and welcome to our podcast. I'm Dani, and today Crate.com talks with Owen McDonald, the service manager at Jigsaw. If you haven't heard of it, Jigsaw is an Irish mental health. I'm going to say that again. If you haven't heard of it, Jigsaw is an Irish mental health charity focused on supporting young people to achieve better mental health and well-being. Remember, if you're new here to this podcast, press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app. Now, hi Owen and welcome. Hi Danny, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Great, flying. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you here today, Owen. Uh, let's learn more about the history of Jigsaw. Shall we begin with that? I think it's always nice to cover this ground at first. <laughs> oh, definitely. So, Jigsaw is an Irish youth mental health charity, as you said. So. Jigsaw came about really in around 2006, 2008. Um, at that time, Ireland was one of the richest countries in the world. We had the biggest GDP. We were, for, money was being thrown around the place and the Irish government, society, everyone was having a great time. They thought we were great. Um, unfortunately, though, at the time, we were really failing young people. Um, reports were being published by the EU and by the, our own government talking about the desperate needs that there was for young people, and especially their mental health across Ireland, that there were no supports being given, there was no opportunities, and the long-term outcomes did not look good for young people. So the government at that point commissioned uh, Dr. Tony Bates to look into what is our best solutions to addressing these problems. With that, Tony kind of came about this model of early intervention and um, brief care for young people, something that wasn't being done in Ireland. The whole idea of that was, okay, let's support people at the earliest possible point in their mental health journey so that hopefully we can address it when it's early and really support them so that longer down the road, they won't need as much support or hopefully need no support at all. So once that was established, that idea and that model, um, communities were really looked at of where do we pilot this? We identified initially two communities, so Galway in the west of Ireland and Ballymun in the east in Dublin. Um, and these are two communities that were really in desperate need. Galway, in particular, was seeing huge amounts of youth suicide, um, and the community really wanted to start addressing this. What had already been formed in Galway at that point was a cafe called The Gas. Um, it was a youth drugs cafe. The whole life premise was it was young people, college students could come in and they could talk about their addiction. They could get support uh, from a nurse there, free of charge, with no, no ill thought of them at that point. What we saw though really coming at that point was people, young people were going to the nurse not because of their addiction or because of their drug use, but they were going because of their mental health. They were going because their mental health had brought them to a point where they had started using illicit substances. So the nurse at that point was saying, I need support here because this is not what my I was trained to do. So then Tony comes along and we really early on formed that this is what we need to do. We need to support young people in a way that really reacts to what's happened to them and their lives now. From there, we grew, our model changed constantly. We've, we worked with initially 15 to 25 year olds and trying to support them through what's happened in their life. We had doctors at one point, we had um, huge amounts of variety in what how we deliver our program um, to be able to support young people as much as possible and as many young people as possible working with communities and young people to give the best outcomes possible. Up to now, where we are the largest youth mental health um, charity in Ireland, we provide support um, for about 15,000 pe young people annually across the island in 14 counties. Um, and we do huge amounts of community work and we're constantly growing. Um, so yeah, that's where we are and that's where we've come from. Wow, it's it's amazing. I, I love this perspective that you have of look we need to get to these kids early on before we need to fix quote unquote things uh later on because it is so much harder when we are older right i think life gets in the way and we had so much trauma and so many things to deal with and one thing that uh i i kept also thinking here on your history is the way that you approached the kids at first right uh to finding ways to bring them together, bring them to you. So what do you do? What strategies do you have now to keep uh, making this bridge between them? Because um, before I start recording, I mentioned this, right? Uh, that I think these younger generations, they are 
closer to therapy, you know, closer to uh, finding their own tools to a better mental health. Mm -hmm. But still, there there are some challenges. So how do you overcome this? Um, I think our great strength is we hold our hands up and say we have no idea what young people want. Um, the only people who know how to support young people and what young people need are young people themselves. Um, we work with now 12 to 25 year olds and something that we do today that really helps a 12 year old in five years time, in two years time, a new 12 year old then is probably going to need something different. So we have to be really adaptable to what young people are telling us. So in our foundation, one of the core elements we had was incorporating youth voice and not like in a, some companies say like, oh, we really take it on board our customer's voice in what we do. We live it. We have young people come to us and say, this is what we need to do. This is what you need to do. And we were like, okay, let's look at the clinical evidence for and how we can incorporate both of these. And you're right. Since 2008, you know, perceptions of mental health have really developed and really, really positively at that. And um, Ireland had and um, is was a very, very conservative country. And as we become more liberal, attitudes have changed. However, there still is a huge stigma associated with it. Um, and we still see that in when we're in cities and urban settings or when we go out to more rural settings and seeing the differences there. COVID was actually one of the big impacts um, for us in terms of reaching and more young people being more open about their mental health than ever before. Um, huge amounts of research has gone into the challenges that were involved with COVID and challenges for young people's mental health. And absolutely, they're real. But if you were to ask me, the biggest benefit that came from COVID was Everyone wanted to talk about mental health all of a sudden. Mental health became sexy. And we wanted to hear that people were saying that, okay, we need to talk more about mental health. COVID's really impacting young people's mental health. And the stigma not di didn't disappear, but it dropped massively. Unfortunately, though, when you have when that happens and you have a society that already has huge amounts of needs for mental health support, demand increases rapidly. And that's our biggest challenge at the moment because it's not so much us now trying to support young people and get them to talk more. It's now that we have waves of young people coming at us constantly that for us to try to keep our heads above water and make sure that we're still providing that care in a timely manner to the highest quality. And we have to really, it's a balancing act for us on how we engage with our communities to ensure that we do that. Um, yeah, I, I love the way that you put how uh, things changed after COVID because I felt like globally we felt that that same thing it became something to talk about and one thing that i i got curious here to think uh was because we're talking about a demographic that it's still very much close to their families i like to to believe right we still have parents in the picture it's different from after 25 i believe we mm -hmm. kind of migrate we distance ourselves mm -hmm. from our house so do you see like the families coming together with the kids in this process or no? Or sometimes it's because of family issues that they end up um, getting uh, closer to you to get help. We have a, it's a white, it's, it's difficult to put a one size fits all answer. So yeah. um, a lot of young people, so in working with 12 to 25 year olds, I'd say 18 is probably our cutoff of, Below 18, that's generally family driven. Around 60, 70% of our referrals at that point would come from the parents themselves um, calling saying, my young person needs support. And that's all great. One parent would generally arrive with them. Um, where in some of our services where we're trying new models to try to deliver even better care earlier, we do actually sometimes see two parents arrive. However, family therapy isn't really what we do. And we try to support people and the young person themselves and what the young person's challenges are, are at that point. The biggest reason we see young people come to us between 12 and 25 is anxiety. Um, about 78% of the young people who came to our service in Galway last year um, were experiencing some form of anxiety, which is massive, um, along with other issues, uh, other presenting issues. So we have depression, no mood, sleep sleep issues have become massive and really, really adding to the other uh, pieces that are impacting young people's lives. Um, bullying this year has become a bigger issue than we've seen in a number of years. Anger as well. Um, we see a huge percentage of young people present with all these pieces now. 
some some coming from family. Mostly, however, it's other traumas impacting the young person's life. And uh, you actually brought another point that is important to to highlight here is how can these young people actually get in contact uh, to you to get help? So you mentioned that sometimes it's um, uh, a parent or someone that is a legal responsible uh, from this for this person they get in touch with you. But are there other other ways to do it? Yeah, so what we want to make sure is life is difficult for young people. Jigsaw should be easy. So if a young person who wants to get in touch with us, we will work with them. Um, in Ireland, there is the age consent and we have to operate on is uh, 18. So we would need parental consent at that point. Um, so parents can get in touch with us. Over 18, the young person can get in touch. We have GPs who refer into us and um, teachers or any schools or sports clubs that young people are involved in, all can um, refer into us, um, so long as the young person wants to be there. Um, talk therapy, is it's very important when you're doing talk therapy that the person wants to talk. Um, so that's one of the big points that we need to emphasize at that point. For any information, people can always go to jigsaw.ie um, and you can see the list of all the services that are available to you in your locality. And uh, We also have Jigsaw Online. So that is a Jigsaw live chat where twice, three, twice to three times a week, young people can go online and have an instant messaging, instant messaging platform to talk to a therapist there and then and get the support that they need in that brief time. And the biggest course we see actually come onto that platform are young people who are in the back of class in school that something might have happened over lunchtime that has really kind of upset them and they want to talk to someone there and then. And that conversation helps. But that issue doesn't grow legs. And it doesn't mean that further down the line they need different supports. That's always a big win. But yeah, jigsaw.e. Amazing. And we're going to add the link to your page uh, in the description of this episode so people can really get in touch and, and learn more more about it. Now, oh, and, uh, another point that I feel like it's, especially you mentioned now the the people that uh, the kids are coming from in the back of the bus, you know, they're facing school problems. Uh, do you have partnerships with schools, with local schools, so you can really be in there with the kids? Mm -hmm. So one of our strategies was in Jigsaw. So while we do our therapeutic services, um, for us, it, was, it has always and it is always important to interact with young people where they are in life as well, to try to provide education and support to them where they live, where they le learn, where they work and where they play. So that's in schools and their sports clubs. So um, we run programs with, across our community and a variety of settings that young people will be engaged in. Uh, we work with businesses who uh, support and provide work for young people and um, sports clubs across the counties where in every part of Ireland all of a sudden um, providing, talking to teams, talking to coaches. And then we're working with young people about how they can best support the young people in their lives. We have parents groups um, across the country who we speak to about supporting the young people in their lives. Um, schools, as you said, they're a huge setting. That's one of the biggest stressors. And it's actually a piece of research that we conducted. Back in 2012, 2019, we produced um, a piece of research along with UCD, a school of psychology called the My World Survey. Up to that point, there was no research into the health and well-being of young people across Ireland. In that research, we um, surveyed 19,000 young people and we wanted to get a real picture of how they were doing and what was impacting and what helped and what didn't help with their mental health. So again, back to that earlier point, young people telling us what helped and what didn't help them. One of the biggest things that we saw coming into that was the impact of school exams. At school and exams and everything involved the education setting, how negatively sometimes that impacts young people. School exams, um, homework, the social aspects in the school were sometimes up to 60-70% of the biggest impactors on young person mental health being poor. So what we wanted to do then is make sure like that, that we're engaging in school, supporting them there and then, and educating schools as well and supporting teachers to understand maybe how does it, what is the exam stress that a young person is feeling? How to support and how to identify a young person who may need a bit more support. And if they do, how to give that or how to direct them to the right place. Uh, I always think about having those tools, those assets myself when I was a kid. And I think this is helpful to understand how impactful 
that is, how meaningful that can be. And I do hope our listeners have this perspective as well, because uh, we need more initiatives that are trying to cover uh, all these needs, you know, to talk to kids at this young age uh, and with a different approach, I believe. Not just, not so top down, but I, I loved when you brought it to us that you're trying to bring them in, in the more fierce sense, right? You talk with the kids in, in your school, kids um, in your neighborhood, people that really talk your language and that makes, makes a whole difference. Now, when looking look to the future, what would be the next steps, you know, the next projects that Jigsaw has in mind for, for the future? And I suppose as a service, what well, we can never grow enough, unfortunately, at the moment. We need to grow and grow to support more and more young people because more and more young people are coming to us every year. Um, our whole mission is to help bring about an Ireland where young people's mental health is both valued and supported and we need to be there we're currently there to support along with our state services um, to try and support them valuing we're working on constantly with our community work um, as we move forward what we want to make sure is that mental health is accessible to every young person that they don't need to do all the traveling that is involved currently and um, we have in where I am in Galway uh, we have island communities and we don't want the young person to feel that they have to get a boat to get a bus to get into the city to get another bus over to us then get the whole journey back sometimes and historically we've had young people who travel for seven hours within the same county just to access mental health and that's not right so what we want to do is really promote our online services we want young people to be able to be at home or be in somewhere in their community where they can talk to us and um, at a time that suits them we want to make sure that Every young person across Ireland has access to our services. Um, we're not in every county, unfortunately. And as a charity, we're limited by our own funding situation, but how we can grow and how we can support more young people. So when we talk about kind of where we want to go, we want to be in an Ireland that we can support as many young people as possible. The biggest barrier for us getting there is, like many char charities, is our funding. That if we can't find the financial support to be able to support young people's mental health for free in a way that it should be in a country, then unfortunately we're going to be restricted to how much we can help. Would you say that funding is your biggest challenge now in an organizational level to keep things move forward or are there other factors going on as well? Um, I'd say funding along with our demand. If, if our demand wasn't as high as it is at the moment, funding wouldn't be an issue because we would have enough capacity to provide the support required. However, that's not the reality and it won't be the reality because mental health literacy is improving. And while mental health literacy improves, more people want to access services. So those services need to have more capacity. So the funding is our biggest problem. We're a charity. We provide, we, are, we receive support from communities. We receive support from the services as well. And um, however, that also needs to increase so that we can adapt and increase our capacity. Well, let's let's talk about this then. So would you say that this is the best way that people listening to us or watching us right now to help you guys keep going? And how can we do that? Um, absolutely. If someone wants to support Jigsaw, really fundraising for us would be the biggest piece. And obviously, you have a global listenership that anyone in any other country, there's services like us in many other countries to support young people and their mental health. Uh, we have Findry, we have... Um, uh, Headspace in Australia, there's many organizations. So find your local support and make sure you support your local community and charities to provide this. If you want to support Jigsaw, though, because you're really like me, um, you can go to jigsaw.ie for slash fundraising, um, where you can uh, see an I donate link where you can donate and everything is really appreciated um, via that link. And it'll all go towards supporting young people's health. We will make sure and to make it easy for people to find information, find ways to help, because this is a cause that we we really, really think that more people should get involved with. Uh, if again, I think I, I'm gonna repeat myself here, but I feel like if we do spend time taking care of kids, the chances are that our collective future will be so, so much better. I think that's the perspective. Mm -hmm. The research shows that the research shows that 
if you look at, I think it's with 75% of adults who um, present with mental health issues or concerns, they have also experienced them. They first experienced them when they were a teenager. So we can support at that early point, hopefully that number can become smaller. And if we can make that number become smaller, there's less stress on the other aspects of the health services. So it's accessing early intervention and supporting people at the earliest possible point when they're at that age can really help overall society in that change. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us today. This was a great conversation. Thank you very much. And for everyone else watching or listening to us right now, thank you again for staying with us for this more episode. And remember, if you liked it, press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app. Share these episodes with your friends, with your family, with anyone that you think you should care. Social media everywhere, guys. Let's spread the word about the importance of Jigsaw. Get involved if you can. Spread the word, please. Donate. And well, I see you in the next episode. Bye.